One of the important roles we also have in Active Directory is the global catalog. Now some technical jargon to describe this that Microsoft always uses. They will always say the global catalog hosts a partial attribute set for other domains in the forest and supports queries for objects throughout the forest. What that actually means, I have a domain. I'm just gonna call this domain A and domain B. These two domain controllers here, I'm just gonna call them domain controller one and two. The objects created on these domain controllers are for domain A. So if you went here and created a user named Bob, Bob only replicates between domain controllers one and two because they are in the same domain. So really this database file, which is named ntds.dit, it's the same file, just a replica of it on each of these and it replicates changes, that is it. Well, if you go to domain controller B, this will have, I'm just gonna call them domain controllers three and four, but they are completely separate. Objects created here, so if I created a user Sally, Sally would only replicate between these two domain controllers. Objects here live in the database and get replicated here. That's it. So a completely separate ntds.dit file stores a completely separate set of objects. These two domains are simply connected to each other through what we call a trust relationship, but each one has its own set of objects. So whenever you see multiple domains in a forest like this, always think of it as separate databases. There's really one database per domain and that database is replicated to all domain controllers in that domain. That poses a challenge. Well, let's say I have a user in domain B. We'll say Joe. Joe has his computer. Joe wants to search for someone's email address, say Bob's email address. The problem, when Joe opens his email client, Microsoft Outlook or whatever it is, if his client only connects to domain B, then he would only get a list of users from domain B and email addresses for those users. Well, he wants to see everyone's email address. So what the global catalog does, you enable that on your individual domain controllers and it stores a copy of users from other domains. So let's say this domain controller here, domain controller one, I'm just gonna say GC for global catalog. Down here, uh, domain controller three is also a global catalog server. What that means, not only does domain controller three replicate objects to and from domain controller four, now it also replicates objects from domain controller one, the other global catalog server. Now, when this says it hosts a partial attribute set for other domains in the forest, attribute is another word for property. When this replicates a user from domain A, it's only replicating properties or attributes that you would likely search. Things like telephone number, email address, those types of things would be replicated. Things you would likely search for. It's not gonna replicate things that it thinks you would never search for. For example, there's an attribute named account expires that'll show you if a user account's gonna expire. Only people that work in IT would ever look at that attribute. So that's not an attribute that would ever be replicated to your global catalog server. So easiest way to think of it, if you're using an email client or something like that, and you're searching for an email address, a user, the purpose of the global catalog is just to give you a repository to connect to that has a list of all the users in the entire forest and all the common properties they think you would actually search. Now, a few facts about it. In a single domain, it's recommended you configure all the domain controllers to hold a copy of the global catalog. Now, the reason for that, something like Outlook, the global address book in Outlook, it is designed to query the global catalog. And again, we'll just write GC for global catalog. So that's embedded in the application. It actually queries your DNS server saying, can you tell me where this global catalog is? That's all automated. So we don't have any interaction with that. It's just how it actually works. Well, if you are in a single domain, if you make all your domain controllers global catalog servers, it can query any of those global catalog servers and it will be able to pull this email address list. 
With that said, if you have multiple domains in your forest, you can also make every domain controller a global catalog. We'll see when we install Active Directory, all domain controllers do default to be global catalog servers. If you are in an environment where you have multiple sites, as in like physical locations, you should make at least one domain controller in each site a global catalog server. The advantage for that, if my domain here is in Vancouver, and my domain here, domain B, is in New York City. If you do not have a global catalog server in the New York City domain, then every time your users query something through Outlook, like an email address or anything like that, that request has to go all the way back to Vancouver. So it would just be more efficient if you had a global catalog in each of these sites. So anything users query, they would simply query the domain controller and the site they're actually in. So at a minimum, one per site.